Hello and welcome to the Archie Luxury Program. Today I'd like to talk about a really sad tale about a Patek enthusiast. And uh, I've, been, I've been reading this story on uh, Time Zone and uh, I, I, just, I just thought it was such an interesting posting and uh, I, I just wanted to, to, to convey the, the story because it just shows you how crazy WIS watch enthusiast you know nutters are when it comes to their watches and um, the story is, is from is from a guy in in Wales um, and basically you know the the uh, the uh, the story is that he's basically he's achieved his holy grail watch which is a, a Patek Philippe as you can imagine and uh, he owns it for a couple of years and then he, in a very strange way, he sells it before he dies so that he doesn't have to trouble his wife. And I mean, fuck. All I can say is, you know, if you're that fucking close to, to the casket, I mean, fuck, just sell everything and buy a, 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 a plot in a lawn cemetery and, um, you know, start looking at options for your casket. I mean, it's just so fucking depressing. I mean... Jesus Christ. So I'll just read you the, the posting that, that started this all. It said, 5127R, reasons for selling. And that's a, that's a Patek, very similar to Archie's 5107 in white gold, except it's in rose gold. And it's actually the model after the 5107. No doubt some are astonished that I would contemplate selling my 5127R, the most beautiful watch ever made or will ever be made, in my very humble opinion. My wife would have absolutely no idea of how to go about selling it should the need arise. We are both pensioners. Insurance and security were also becoming a problem. Money is not the reason for the sale. The watch is in as new condition, in my very humble opinion. Even after five plus years of daily wear, I thought I'd sell the watch while I'm still able and save my dear wife any possible has hassle later down the line. This is a little poem that I posted that I think sums it up. Now it's just me watch that I strap on every morning and take off every night. The most beautiful of watches, but now it's just me watch. Do I gaze at its beauty in awe as I once did before? No, now it's just me watch. Sad, isn't it? Any regrets? No. Thanks for reading. And, uh, you know, it, it's, 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 just, it's just so fucking sad. And... Uh, I've, uh, I've, uh, I was actually researching this story and I, I went through this gentleman's um, years with the Patek and I, I found some interesting postings and I thought I'd share these with you. The gentleman in question, is he lives in, he's a male from Wales, UK, he's retired, um, he's 65 year old, married, retired design engineer interest to watches, travel and reading and generally enjoying his retirement. Now he, he's a really nutter enthusiast because in one of the postings he criticizes the 5107 and says it's a bit of a scratch magnet and uh, you know 5107 and 5127 rivalry is such that I would say well the 5107 is a better investment, it's a better watch. It, uh, it looks bigger it, uh, it's it's more traditional whereas the 5127 owners with the the curve bezel would be saying oh no no theirs is much more the superior piece it's just a fucking and and dave the the gentleman in this this story here he's a mad fucker who 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 goes on about how his watch is superior and it's just 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 this mad nutter sort of shit there but um yeah, it's it's quite sad, and 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 uh, I'll I'll just go back to to one of the first posts that that Dave Dave had there, and uh, 
he's talking about why a Patek 5127R. My grail for over 40 years has been a Patek. The Calatrava 5127, in my humble opinion, especially in rose gold, is one of the most beautiful and understated watches ever made, but in, in very subjective. And he goes on to say there, um, Patek 5127 in rose gold, trying to tell as many people as possible. However, due to circumstances, I won't be able to collect it until the end of September. It's going to be a long couple of waits. N long couple of months, I should say. He, he then becomes a bit of a mad fucker. He goes on talking about his movement. He said, the Patek Calibre 3157 SC is the best movement ever made in the whole history of the watch. No one can touch it. That's, that's Dave there. So you can see his enthusiasm for, for the watch. He goes on there, Grail watch, or should I say first Grail watch. I'll be 65 on the 21st of June 2008 and have spent more than half my that time lusting after my grail watch, a Patek Philippe, any Patek Philippe. On the 26th of July 2006, I'll never forget that date, I was fortunate enough to take delivery of a Patek 5127R when I got the watch home and slit the poly sleeve to re reveal my dream, I actually had tears in my eyes. That was about 19 months ago now, and fortunately the honeymoon continues. It still remains one of the most beautiful things I've ever set eyes on. If, like me, you thought that your grail watch would be the last watch you ever desired, then think again. If you're a true WIS, emphasis, emphasis on idiot, it isn't. I can speak from experience. A good analogy, I think, is food. You may love spaghetti, but could you eat it for every meal of every day for the rest of your life? I don't think so. A little variety is required. The only true beauty that has maintained my attention for over the past 50 years is my dear wife, whom, without whom none of this would have been possible anyway. In October of 2007, can't remember the date, funny that, I started to wonder Watch wise, what is that is, and bought another beauty, a Lang Lange 1815. As fellow WISers, and I'm sure you recognize the symptoms, watches that are calling me now are the Patek 5146 and Lange 1. Lange 1 moon phase. I also found myself attracted to the classic Simba. He lists a whole lot of other watches there. Don't hold your breath for an incoming post because I don't expect to be buying a new watch anytime soon, nor will there buy a 5127 on sales corner. Thanks for reading, and remember, Grail watches should remain, should be renamed First Grail Watch, Dave in Wales. And it's, it's quite interesting, he's got a lot of enthusiasts for this piece here, he just, just absolutely, absolutely loved it, and um, you know, he's, he's very much in love with his watch. You can see, see by this, he's, he's also, then he goes on, he consolidates his collection down to two pieces. My collection consists of two, a Patek 5127R and a Jaeger Le Coultre MUT34. You can see pictures of that. And uh, I wear them both daily, the Patek getting the most wrist time. The MUT is a true delight and delight to wear. Dave in Wales. I can't criticise his taste in Jaeger Le Coultre. That's a, that's a great brand. The Ultra Thin is a, is a gorgeous, gorgeous piece there. But um, it's, it's just very interesting to, to see. Um, he comments on the accuracy of the 5127 movement. Um, he talks about how great the movement is. He's just such, a, such an enthusiast. And it's just such a shock that he still loves the watch. You can see the, the respect and the love for it, but he's, he's kind of hit that stage in life where he's planning for his funeral. I mean, it's just fucking sad. And it's really sad that he's not gonna pass it down to his children or grandchildren or anyone like that, but that's a story. And uh, tell me what you think. Is that sad? If you love your holy grail piece, isn't that the saddest thing that could happen, is that you part with it before you die? I mean, I don't know about you, but in my retirement and later years, I'd love to, to have my Patek on my wrist when that bad moment came along. But you tell me, 
I'm Archie Luxury, and thank you for listening to this story. Bye-bye.